Well, good evening and welcome again to Evening Prayer and our nightly reading and reflection on the Psalms together. The Bible Songbook, where the raw emotions, thoughts and prayers of godly songwriters are brought to life through their songs and poems. And as we read of their struggles and triumphs, their joys and sorrows, uh, a sense of oppression and deliverance in their friendship with God, hopefully we too can be encouraged in our relationship with him also. Tonight we're going to be reading Psalm 43 together. So if you have a Bible there or a Bible app on your phone, please turn to it now. Uh, the songwriters of the Psalms frequently express the truth that coming into God's presence is a choice, a choice by us, not something that just merely happens to us as a circumstance. As the writer of Psalm 43 says to God, I will go to the altar of God, the source of all my joy. I will praise you with the harp. I will put my hope in God. If we want to meet with God in this time together now and not just go through the motions, we too need, wherever we are right now in our homes, to choose to turn to God. So if you want to do that, let's do that together now. I'm going to begin uh, by lighting a candle. You can do this too if you have one at home. It's a simple way of acknowledging our choice to come into God's presence and his light that shines in the darkness. So Father God, right now we choose to pause at the end of this day. We choose to breathe more slowly. To be aware of your presence with us. To lay down our agendas and desires before you. to offer you ourselves as a living sacrifice. And we say, come Holy Spirit, please draw near to us as we now draw near to you. So Psalm 43. Most uh, scholars would agree that uh, this psalm is, is not a standalone song, uh, but actually extra lyrics to Psalm 42, which we read yesterday. Psalm 43 even ends on exactly the same chorus. Um, so, for instance, if like me, you started listening to music on vinyl all those years ago, uh, Psalm 42 on its own, uh, you could say is the seven inch single, but when 43 is added, it becomes the, the EP extra play 12 inch single. And the composers, and you could say that this is a song written by the whole band, are credited as the sons or the descendants of Korah. Now, even before we read the psalm, if we didn't realise it, that's actually very significant. Korah, if you didn't know, was a leader of a rebellion against uh, God's authority in the person of Moses during the time of the Exodus. And he perished as a result. But nearly 500 years later, his family line would include the prophet Samuel. And by the time of David, some decades later, some of Korah's descendants were worship leaders appointed by David. I think it's marvellous that the descendants of Korah wrote words that God was pleased to include in Scripture because it reveals to us the grace of God. 
and it tells us that we don't have to be defined by a, a bad upbringing or the sins of our past. In God, there is always grace and redemption, the possibility of a new start. And the song that is um, Psalm 42 uh, stroke 43 is plainly a song of exile. The songwriter or songwriters are in a place either physically, uh, emotionally or maybe both where they feel cut off from a formerly blessed relationship with God. Now it could be a self-inflicted exile in that they have wandered away from a close intimacy with God through sinful behaviour. And this song expresses a coming to their senses and a heartfelt desire and determination to return to intimacy with God. Or it could be written from a place of imposed exile. We know that some of the Psalms uh, were written by God's people uh, from a place of exile in Babylon, the place where they were taken, uh, taken to as a people as enslaved trophies of war after Jerusalem was conquered. And that would explain the language in, in this, this uh, sort of uh, double psalm of uh, being surrounded by ungodly people or oppressed by the enemy in verse 2. It would also explain uh, the, the, the sense of a longing to return to the place where God lives, which for Jews then would be in the temple at Jerusalem. So this is a psalm of, of dislocation, a sense of not being in that place of connection with God where they know they want, want to be and maybe formerly were and want to get back to. So I think this psalm has a lot to say to us in our place of imposed exile from gathered worship in our church buildings. And that sense of exile that we feel from that, it expresses that longing uh, to, to return in, in prayer. Or maybe uh, if we too are feeling that we have blown it with God through something that we've done, or just through our, our upbringing, the guilt, the guilt of something past is still shaping uh, our presence. This holy song, brings hope and um, in order to enter into that hope this psalm begins uh, as as any uh, connection with God must with coming to him and a laying of ourselves out before him so I'm going to read this psalm um, slowly through now it's quite a short one and then I'll leave a time of reflective silence before I lead us in prayer I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation, but you just follow in whatever translation you have there uh, at home. Psalm 43. O oh God, take up my cause. Defend me against these ungodly people. Rescue me from these unjust liars. For you are God, my only safe haven. Why have you tossed me aside? Why must I wander around in darkness, oppressed by my enemies? Send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. There I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. I will praise you with my harp, O God, my God. Why am I discouraged? Why so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Saviour and my God.
Lord God, thank you that no matter the reason or location of our dislocation or sense of exile, from where we used to be or want to be with you, you are ever ready to hear us and come to us at a moment's notice. Thank you that there is no mental or physical wall of separation that you cannot walk through to be with us now. Father, I pray for anyone watching and listening to these words right now who is living in a sense of being cut off from your blessings and your presence and have a longing to return. I ask you to come to them right now, Holy Spirit, and to affirm them of your love. Thank you that if they were the only sinner to have broken their words or dis disobeyed yours, thank you that you would still have died for them alone. Thank you that you love each one of us as if there were only one of us. Thank you that in Christ you provide a way out of the brokenness of our past redemption from the legacy of our upbringing or the sins of our parents. Thank you, Father, for your amazing grace. I pray for all of us who are experiencing an ongoing sense of grief at the loss of fellowship with friends and family and loved ones. For those of us who long for the exile from gathered worship and fellowship to end. As we choose, like the psalmist, to make an active decision to worship you from where we are, from our place of exile, rather than to delay worshipping, to wait for our return, may we realise what really matters in our relationship with you. I think of the uh, words of the Matt uh, Redman song, uh, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing that I've made it, when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. If you still have Psalm 43 open in front of you, whatever your translation is, I encourage you to uh, say out loud the chorus in verse 5 with me now as a prayer of affirmation. Why am I discouraged? Why so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Saviour and my God. So now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this night and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>